Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are continuing a story that I started four years ago. I got up to three chapters, and then I left. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are doing the one and only It Lives in the Woods. So, we're going to go ahead and start with the entire fucking game of It Lives in the Woods. So, here we go. All right. So, real quick, um, this is a little note about this book real quick. It is a uh, it contains disturbing images, depictions of violence and bullying, and playing a discretion is advised. It's time to create your character. I want to play as a guy. There we go. Choose your character's face. All right. Um, well, one, I am not. Um, no. <laughs> God, actually, you know what's weird too? It actually moves pretty good, um, surprisingly. Like it, uh, oh, because with the other tablet, it had a little delay. This one's actually moving really smooth, so that's uh, that's a good thing. Um, I don't remember what I went with on this one. I'm pretty sure it was that guy. Yeah, it might be face. It might be this one. Okay, here's this look. Okay, uh, here's another weird thing. Um. <clears throat> When I got back into choices, it said I had 70. Yeah, that. It says I have 72 fucking diamonds. I, I don't know where it came from. I, I haven't, I haven't touched choices in so fucking long. So I don't know where in the hell this came from at all. So I just want to throw that out there right now. I don't know where this came from. So um. Yeah, so real quick, uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'm, might as well, might as well look cool. Or should I save my diamonds for choices? You know what, I'm going to save the diamonds for choices. I don't think I should do it for hair stuff. Um, let's see, did they update the hair? Because remember, the hair was terrible. Yeah, I went with that one. God, looking asshole. You know what, why not? I'll just, I'll just stick with what we got. Alright, close shave. Long and short. Best for both worlds. Best both worlds. Do 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 Get the best of both worlds. I'm going to help. Finally, it's time to choose your name. Uh, last time I called him Despacito. Despacito. Kuta kuta kito. Pull up at the beep. He he he. Press enter. What's the answer? Doc. I pressed it. Choose this look. All right, cool. <laughs> oh wait, that's right. <laughs> I was supposed to get the phone to do that. <laughs> what? <sighs> Still half asleep. We grope around, I don't know why it says grope, we grope around on the shelf until you find your phone. Who uh, sex me at three in the fucking morning? God damn. Hey, are you there? It's Dan. I messed up. I I'm so sorry. Dan, it's been a while. Are you okay? What happened? I went back into the woods. I had to be sure. I had to prove to myself that it was all in my head. But it wasn't, Despacito. It's all real. He's real. Dan, are you drunk or something? I heard him whispering just like when we were kids. Stop it, Dan. We made all that stuff up. Mr. Red was just a dumb kid's game that got out of control. He doesn't exist. He never did. He does. He's here with me now. Wait, where are you? I can hear him in the trees. I hear him whispering. What the fuck? I don't remember this shit. Harsh from the window makes you jump, dropping a phone. Ah! A dark shape looms outside the window. Heart hammering in your chest, you fumble for the light switch. 
Light floods your bedroom, streaming out of the window. To reveal... Dan? What are you doing here? Despacito! Can I come in? I guess so. Hang on. You move to the window and slide it open enough for Dan to climb inside. You got some explaining to do, though. First off, how do you get up into the bed? No, what the hell are you doing here? Yeah. We've barely spoken in years, and suddenly you decide to pay me a visit at three in the fucking morning? I'm sorry. Don't apologize. Just tell me what's going on. You sounded really freaked out in your texts. Uh, it's nothing. I'm fine. Come on, we, we need to get the others. Uh, what others? Our friends! Stacy, Lily, Noah, Lucas, Ava, and Andy! I've got something to show you, but we need to bring everyone. Dan, I've barely spoken to any of the group since we were little kids. After what happened to Jane? But they have to come, Despacito! Everyone has to be there! That's the rules! Your phone buzzes again, rattling against the floorboard, sighing you pick it up. Dan, I want to help you, but honestly, you're kind of freaking me out right now. We've got our first day of school in like six hours. We could talk then, okay? He phone buzzes again, another notification popping up on the screen. You look down. Are you still there? I think I'm lost. Despacito, my battery's almost dead. Please help me. Uh, who the fuck's in my room? Who the fuck's in my room? Who Who the fuck is- Okay. Wait. We have to go back to the words, Despacito. The lights in your bedroom flicker as a chill wind sweeps through your open window. Ah, damn. Hands trembling, slowly look from your, your phone screen. Dan? A smile spreads across Dan's shadowed face, stretching wider than it should. <laughs> you start to back away, but Dan's hand clamps around your wrists. You try to pull free, but he clings to you with inhuman strength. Hey! Uh, punch him. To get him off you, at least. Your fist slams against Dan's cheek, but he barely even flinches. What the... Dan throws you to the floor, pinning your back against the rough boards. Oh, great. We all have to really go back. Don't you remember? <laughs> Get off me! You claw on Dan, and his flesh crumbles beneath your fingernails. Dan leans in, his cold breath stinking of moldy dirt and blood. Everyone plays together, Despacito. Oh shit, what the f <laughs> Oh, what? Oh shit. <laughs> Wake the fuck up. Whoa, what just happened? <laughs> oh shit. The creature's hand tightens around your throat. Your vision begins to blur, shadows seeming to wither, wait, to whip and bleed in the dark room. You have no breath left to scream. You simply sink, paralyzed by terror, in terror, into a cold, black nothingness. Jerk into wakefulness, adrenaline burning in your veins. As you thrash against your attacker until you realize 
that you're alone in your room. The hell? Oh, what a messed up dream. Reaching up to feel your neck, you flinch as your fingers brush the fresh bruises there. Uh, what the? Scary or upsetting things will decrease your nerve skill score. Yeah, that's what it is. Beware, a low nerve score will make it much harder to keep your cool in dire situations. Yeah, so I think what that means, like, uh, if it... I think. I haven't done it. I'm just assuming. If uh, there's, like, one of those cool timer things, uh, it will literally go faster if your nerve is uh, super low. I think. No way. This, this can't be happening. You grab your phone to look at the text from last night, only to discover that the battery is dead. What the fuck? Crap. Sighing, you toss your phone into your school bag and turn to your closet. Guess I'd better get ready for school. I need to look good for my first day of senior year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm debating on it. <laughs> I'm actually debating on it. Um... I don't know. Uh. Huh. 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 Debating. I mean, what I, what I think I could do is maybe just do this one, the regular rock and roll one. Because honestly, in school, I did dress up like that. So, you know what? Yeah. Choose this look. Why don't you want to spend your diamonds? You have diamonds. I'd rather do them on choices, not on outfits. All right. Grabbing your school bag, you hurry down the stairs. Actually, I realize I'm doing something wrong. I remember back then, I said we a lot instead of you. So, you know what? I'm going to try doing that again. Outside, we cast a nervous glance toward the woods that are bordered, that border the edge of our house. Our yard. House, yard, either or. Creepy shit. Like the, oh, okay. Mr. Red. Dan couldn't have seen him. That was all just make-believe. As you descend the steps, a friendly voice calls out from the yard next door. Good morning, neighbor! Oh, hey Sid, what's up? Just coming back for more walk. Hey Hilda, look who it is. I hear you. A blur of black and white fur crashes out of the what crashes out of the bushes, looking around excitedly. Woof woof, motherfucking! <laughs> uh, Hilda bounds over to you. Us, sorry. Hilda bounds over to us, her bushy tail waving like a flag. Hi, girl. Wish you were a damn cat. Things that make you feel happy or brave will increase your nerve score. Having a lot of nerve will help you weather, yeah, weather the trials ahead. Oh, oh, I love you. oh come on, we're just one. Bullshit. Oh, it's good to see you. It's good to see you too. Oh, I love you. Ah. Hilda flops on her back, wiggling happily as you rub her belly. Parents around? I'd see him out about this morning. Yeah, they're still overseas, uh, dealing with my grain aunt's estate or whatever. They'll be back in a couple weeks. Hell, that's a long time for a kid to be by themselves, especially in a big house like that. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, uh, I can take care of myself. It does get a little scary. The nightly raiders keep me occupied. I can take care of myself. I just turned 18, you know. I can do my own laundry and everything, yeah. I'm getting pretty good at mac and cheese, too. Well, I made set off the smoke alarm, like, you know, three this time, or this week. Ah, oh, they grew up so fast, yeah. 
Sid suddenly cocks his head, taking a few steps towards your house and crouching down besides a small pile of booster. See, I keep. I, well, this one said his, right? Our? I could have said our. Toward our house, yeah. Eh, I gotta get used to it again. Hun. Huh. Wonder what that is. Sid picks something out of the pile and holds it up a glossy black stone carved with a strange ruin. This yours? Strange stuff. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember these. Yeah. Weird. The stone is surprisingly heavy in your hand. In our hand. We move our crack thumb. I mean, we move our thumb along the deep crack that runs through the center of the engraved ruin. I wonder where this came from. And what broke it? Beats me. Looks like paperweight or something. Brushing away some of the dirt from the stone, we freeze as a familiar smell rats into our nose. Cold earth and a hint of blood. It smells just like that thing that... You stop yourself, glancing nervously at Sid. It smells like what? Uh, weird. It, it smells kind of weird. Sid nods, dusting off his hands. Well, I'll let you get to school. You just let me know if you need anything, all right? My door is always open. Will do. Thanks, Sid. Sid whistles and Hilda jumps up to follow him. You look down at the stone in your hand. What I saw last night was real. This could be a clue. Better keep it somewhere safe. It takes a few tries for you to open the shed door. It's rusted, hinges. See, keep saying you. Just keep saying. I just keep saying you. It takes a few tries for you to open the shed door. It's rusted, hinges, screeching with every shove. Jeez, when's the last time someone was in here? Cobwebs tickle our face as we approach the work table, setting the cracked stone down on its dusty surface. You found a cracked stone! Yeah, apparently you can get all this shit. Yeah, I remember that. The inventory shed will house all the weapons, artifacts, and lore documents that you collect over the course of the story. See, this one actually felt really fucking cool. There are 16 items total. Some will make you stronger in the trials ahead. Others will provide valuable information, backstory, and clues. Which you need to spend fucking gems on. That's why I'm saving them. Uh, I bet I could fit all kinds of stuff in here. Flicking off the light, you step back out into the yard, shutting the shed door behind you. A few minutes later, on the asphalt road that runs along the edge of the woods, we hear a car approach from behind. Stepping to the side, we glance up, locking eyes with the driver of a black vintage Camaro. <laughs> that guy looks familiar. The car slows to a stop and the driver leans out through the open window. <laughs> hey, do I know you from somewhere? I think so? I was just wondering the same thing. Uh, do you go to Westchester High? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Thank God. I left that hellhole behind a couple of years ago. <laughs> okay, I don't know why you make that stupid fucking hoo 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 shit, but okay. Lucky you. <laughs> Hang in there. He'll be out before you know it. <laughs> Anyway, I'd better get to work. Catch you later. God damn it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Wait, I thought I muted it. How the fuck did he give a goddamn notification? Did I mute you? Yeah, I muted you. What the fuck? Oh shit, there's even more. Okay, cool. Bad. Oh, uh, fuck. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, I better get to work. Catch you later, loser. <laughs> he steps on the gas and the car starts to pull away. Oh, I never got your... But he's already too far away to hear. 
disappearing around a bend in the road. Name. Alright. Shrugging, we continue our long walk towards school. Where the fuck is the school bus? A thin crowd of students trickle across the front yard of our school, waving and calling out to friends as they converge on the front doors. Squeezing through the loud, crowded hall, we find a familiar girl standing at the locker next to ours. Oh! Hey, Ava! <laughs> so, why, why, why do you, what, why did you sound like that? So, okay, cool. Uh, not much. That hasn't always been. Wait, not much. That hasn't always been your locker, has it? I never seen you using it before. <laughs> Got reassigned. Yeah. Why do you sound like the other guy? Uh, fine, I sound like this. Got, got reassigned. Ava kicks the locker shut and shrugs her back onto her shoulder. Oh look, it's Lily. Eh, I feel like it's not her voice. Following Ava's gaze, you see a nervous girl clutching the textbook to her chest. <laughs> Hi guys. Hey Lily. It's been a while. How was your summer? It was good. It just got back from doing like coding camp up in Portland, you know. You know, uh, one of the other girls invited me to uh, collaborate on a game she's working on. Yeah. Hey, that's awesome. Let me know if you ever need a play tester. <laughs> Lily glances around, furtively, furtively. I can't. I don't know what that says. Lowering her voice. There, um, uh, there, there's actually something I want to talk to you, to to, to you about. Uh, Sure, what's up? Uh, I, I got some really weird text last night. D did you? Lily trails off, looking over your shoulder. You turn to see a pretty girl walking by, chatting with two friends. Oh my god, look, it's been ghosting this guy for like two solid weeks, and he just asked me out for a coffee. Again. Oh boy, just when you think high school might not be the suckering ne necrotic chest wound that you remember. Huh, actually, man, that was pretty good. <laughs> okay, there you go, that's your voice. The guy next to Brittany laughs, running one hand through his hair. Yikes, desperate is not a good luck, yeah. Maybe he did that scared of ghosts. You can try clouds and say clouds of grass. <laughs> That's not just do you even know what? Oh my god. Hi Brittany! The group stops in their tracks and Brittany turns to give Lily an uh crazy look. Ooh. Oh wow, Leo, great sweater. I didn't know Baby Born had a quadruple XL section. <laughs> I, I, I just I, I I just wanted to say hello. Mm. And I wonder it for Roy for my birthday, but I'll set up for not having to listen to your whiny voice anymore. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Your friends have nerve scores too, and your choices can make a big difference. In the final chapters, a character's nerve score will decide if they vanquish their demons or succumb to a terrible fate. Yeah, I'll tell them all. Right, because basing your fashion sense on whatever the wannabe models on Pictogram. Pic Pictogram? Pictogram. Pic Pictogram? Whatever. Pictogram are wearing is way cooler. Nearest flash, Despacito. No one asked you. Oh my god. Uh, didn't hear anyone asking for your opinion either. How about you take your unsolicited... Wait, what? Yeah. How about taking your unsolicited fashion advice to someone who cares? You so do not want to piss me off, Despacito. Ooh, I'm shaking. Lady looks down at the floor, hiding a small smile. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Shh. 
witty comebacks. Aren't you strong suit, track and field boy? <laughs> a cross country asshole! I know, I used the wrong one on purpose to piss you off. Try to keep up. How about you go haunt some of the hallway freaks? I think, I think, I think he meant another hall, whatever. Ava gives Cody a long, ponderous look, then reaches up to pluck a stray hair from his shoulder. You know, I keep meaning to try out this new curse I found on the internet. If you feel a burning sensation in your eyeballs, that's normal. The... The hell? Well, the hell? Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's what the voice is. Rattling her fingers, Ava stalks away down the hallway. Later, guys. <laughs> Later. Bye, Ava! Ew, Kelly, what's gonna happen to your eyeballs? Oh, God. Chill, Jocelyn. That weirdo just reads too many vampire novels. With any luck, she'll flunk out and you'll live in a dirty old shack like the Pritch Witch. Or Pritch the Witch. Ooh. You're the Pritch the Witch. Read the call her uh, Ava the Witch. <laughs> God damn, you are terrible at this. Well. Well. Good one, Joss. Well. Well, yeah. We shake our head, turning to grab a notebook from our locker. Well, lovely as this has been, we should probably go. Oh my god, is that a hickey? Ah. I already forgot her voice. <laughs> Jocelyn reaches up, poking the fresh bruises on the side of our neck. Ah, get off! Yeah, my! Like anyone would want to chew on his, on this social reject. <laughs> For your information, I got it from your mom. Huh? I think I just bought with an activist. She watch what you say, Despacito. Well, that mouth of yours tends to get you in trouble. Whatever fascinating as this conversation is, I need to go get ready for the prep rally. Yeah. I, yeah, no, I call it prep rally because they're prepping anyway, so... Brittany jerks her head, and the others follow. Cody shoulder cheeks you as he walks by, knocking you hard against the locker. Ugh. Hey! Get him later, Despacito. <laughs> you loser. Rinsing, we rub our shoulders, where it slammed against the locker, glaring after the bullies. The school year is already off to a great start, huh? Should, 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 we, should we report to the office or...? Sure, million time the charm, right? Maybe this time they'll actually get in trouble. Lily smiles ruefully as the two of you join the crowd of students shuffled toward the gym. Music blares! Sorry. Music blares over the gym speakers, and a rush of panic hits as you... Wait, as you're jolted by the crowd? Yeah. Your mind flashes back to the night before. Despacito, are you, are you okay? Yeah, just... Uh, kind of crowded in here. You see anywhere to sit? No, no, not really. Looks... Like there are a like, couple seats up there next to. to, to oh, never mind, that's Ava's spot. Uh, the, the. In the top row of the bleachers, Ava sits scribbling on a worn sketchbook as you watch a couple of freshmen. As we watch a couple of freshmen move to sit beside her. <laughs> the freshman trips over themselves, scrambling to get away from Ava. She glared. What? Yeah, she glares after them, then notices us, watching her. Hmm. Ava nods to the empty bench. Is she inviting me to sit by her? I, I, I think she is. Yeah, maybe I could talk with Ava about what happened last night. She knows about all kinds of supernatural stuff. That would be nice to tell someone who'd actually believe me. 
Talking through your troubles or just spending time with friends is a great way to boost your nerve. Sit with Ava for a chance to catch up and learn from her supernatural expertise. You have to spend gems to do it, don't you? God damn it. Ah, it's just 12. I think in the other one I didn't do it. This one, fuck it. I think it's 12. It's not that bad. You, you, you go ahead. Ava's kind of uh, scares me a little. Mm -hmm. You sure? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I see a spot next to Mr. Cooper. Uh, and, and thanks for your help earlier. The, 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 the despacito. Anytime. See you later, Lily. We climb to the uh, we climb to the top row of the bleachers and slide over to Ava's corner. We point to the empty spot right next to her. Hey, anyone sitting here? Uh, just my ghost friend, but he's really in corp. He's really incorporeal, so it doesn't really count. <laughs> Incorporeal? I don't know what it means. We laugh until we realize that Ava's not laughing too. Ooh. What? Oh, uh, that's sorry. Uh, I just couldn't tell if you were messing with me. It's all part of my mistake. We look at the bench, then back to Ava's expressionless face. I'm gonna leave room for the ghost. Ava smirks as you sit down, leaving a person-sized space between you and her. <laughs> cool. Cool. Good to know I can make you do stuff by saying random spooky nonsense. The two of you sit together for a few mo minutes of silence. Ava scribbles in her sketchbook. So you're gonna tell me what you're so freaked out about? Or are you having fun dismembering the poor bitch? Huh? We look down, realizing that we've been picking splinters off the edge of the bleachers. I do want to talk about it. It's just... It's kind of a weird story. Despacito, look at me. Weird is my middle name. Really? Well, no, it's Dolores. But if you tell me that to... But if you tell that to anyone, I will go to your house and hide eyeballs in your food. Where would you even get... Next time you go to pour a bowl of cereal. Bloop. Eyeballs. Noted. So, what would you say if I told you that last night I saw some kind of... Monster. Depends what this monster looked like. Well, he looked like Dan, at least at first. Well, plot twist. Keep going. Once I figured out it wasn't actually Dan, it attacked me. Then his face kind of melted off and underneath the skin was just dirt, like a... I don't know. A golem? Heard of those? Humanoid creatures made of living clay or dirt, right? Mm, that's the one. Sounds like it fits the bill. I guess. The weirdest thing is that I woke up the next morning and it was gone. Why would it just attack me and leave? Hmm. Well, full disclosure, my knowledge of golems is like 60% Wikipedia and 40% this dude named Magic Stan75 who I met on the Warlock forum. Maybe whatever power that animated the golem is temporary. Or maybe it was all a dream. We shudder, reaching up to the feel of our neck. Definitely not a dream. Dreams don't leave bruises. Hmm. They can, actually. There are beings who can enter, or even affect your dreams. One of those could probably use your dreams to hurt you. You could also be under a curse or something. I've read a lot about a cursed dreams. What? Just for fun? Sure, let's go with that. Ava. I think I'm kind of in love with you. <laughs> How the fuck does that make? What the fuck does that... 
have to the story at all? Okay. Um, how do you know all this stuff? Yeah, that, that, that's... I'm actually curious. How, how, how do you know all this? Well, there's this thing called the internet. <laughs> you know what I mean. Seems like you've been studying this for a while. The world's a freaky place, Despacito. We learned that the hard way. I just want to be ready the next time something happens. Thanks, Ava. I really needed to talk to someone, but I didn't think anyone would believe me. Hmm. Jerry's still out on me believing you. He could be making all this up to screw with me. Do people do that to you? They try, but my kung fu is strong. <laughs> well then, thanks for listening without immediately dismissing me. It's not tough as nails. <laughs> Helps a lot. <laughs> cool. Glad to help. Okay, I think I'm done now. Done? No, done what? Oh, being nice. So I've got this whole bitter misto santo thing going on. If people see us being all friendly, they might think it's uh, okay to talk to me. Can't have that. I would literally die. You pick up your stuff and start edging towards the stairs. Hey, Despacito. Yeah. You're not as big a tool as most people. Coming from you, that means a lot. Yes, it does. Make our way down to the bleachers as they continue to fill, looking for any place we can squeeze in. Awesome! Finally, we spot one empty seat, right next to a familiar figure slouching in the second row. Oh, crap. We quickly turn around, desperately scanning the crowd for another open seat. Any seat, but that one, but there aren't any. Okay. Oh, great. We, cons we considered trying to sneak back out the gym doors until someone shouts at us from a few rows up. Hey, Despacito, sing it, you stupid ass down! Unless you want to watch from the garbage can! Hey! Hello, you're looking at me, and there's a spot right here. I feel like your voice is just gonna change all the time. Rinsing, we turn back around to see Noah looking right at you. Hey, Noah, do you mind if... <laughs> knock, 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 knock yourself out, man. <laughs> yep. Noah scoots over, and we squeeze in beside him. So, uh, what's been up with you? Uh, we haven't really talked since... Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. You sit, neither of you saying another word. Down on the floor of the gym, a tall, handsome guy with glasses walks up to a podium. Why, handsome guy? <laughs> How you doing, Winchester High? The students roar as in response, the bleachers rumble and shake as the crowd pounds their feet on the wood. Whoa. When did Lucas get so popular? Shortly after hitting six feet and discovering hair gel. Shortly before getting elected student body president. Lucas waves to the cheering crowd flashing a smile. Welcome back. Everyone, for anyone who doesn't know me already, I'm Lucas Thomas, your student body prefect. I know everyone's a little salty that summer is over, but trust me, this is going to be one school year you'll never forget. And on that note, let's kick this pep rally off Winchester Wolf style. At Lucas' signal, several cheerleaders jump up from the bleachers, bouncing and waving their pom poms in the air. Oh, maybe I just do her voice like that. You do better than that. Let's hear it. Come on. Huh. Oh, looks like Stacy's doing pretty well too. 
One by one, the cheerleaders trouble across the gym. Stacy draws thunderous cheers as she pulls off an effortless round off into a backflip. Whoa, that's incredible. Yeah, go see, yeah. Beaming, Stacy looks back at the rest of the cheer squad, her smile suddenly fading as she locks eyes with Brittany. Yeah. Uh. Stacy turns and suddenly trips over her own feet sprawling on her face. Ooh, ow. Ah! Stacy! You jump to your feet, hurrying to help Stacy up. Are you okay? What happened? Uh, uh, n nothing. I I'm just a klutz, I guess. Uh, you think you're a klutz? You did a freaking backflip. Seriously, if that's what a klutz looks like, then <laughs> sign me up for klutz lessons. <laughs> Thanks, Despacito, you're the sweetheart. I try. You see me the skill in this? No, it's got the eye on camera. Wow. Blushing, Stacy rejoins the rest of the squad. We sit back down as at the other end of the gym, Brittany steps forward with a smug smile. <laughs> Check this out, everyone. <laughs> I don't know how to do it, I don't know how to do it. Brittany takes three running steps, then flies into a no-handed cartwheel. Ooh, the crowd roars as she sticks the landing. Why do people like her so much? They've got to know how horrible she is. She's hot, and she can do flips. We can't compete with that. Lucas grins from the podium as the cheerleaders return to their seats. Well now, that the cheer squad is done. Totally blowing, blowing our minds. Let's give it up for the Winchester Wolves basketball team. <laughs> More applause sounds as a group of gym guys, as a group of gym guys, yeah, no, that makes sense. Group of guys in basketball jersey forms up in the front of the podium. <laughs> and actually made the team this year. Well, wow, that's actually pretty good. Hey, good for him. Like he's been like he's been working hard. Can't wait to see him play. Come on! We flinch as Cody's voice breaks through the general applause. Well, watch out! It's the triple threat! Triple threat! Andy's head snaps in the direction of Cody's voice, his face suddenly twisted with anger. Hey, why don't you come down here and... He takes one step towards the bleachers, but stops himself as Lucas calls the team captain up to the podium. Stop there. Thanks, Lucas! What's up, Winchester? Hi! The crowd whoops and stops in response. Woo! We got a first game coming up in a couple days, so you guys have better be here to watch us crush it! Not gonna lie, we got a couple rookies on the team this year, but I'm not gonna let that stop us. Nope, shit. Easy shit. Ben pauses as, as the gym lights suddenly flicker. Oh. Huh? Oh no. Lucas' voice calls out over the speakers, drowning out the nervous chatter of the students. Everyone, stay seated. We don't want anyone to fall from the... A burst of static cuts him off and the music shudders, fading in and out. With a loud bang, the gym doors are blown open by a frigid gust of wind. The lights flicker back on, and we suddenly jump out of our seat as Noah suddenly grabs your arm. What are you? Shut up! Shut up! Do, do you hear that? You what? Shh! And you do hear it. Just barely on the edge of your perception, you hear a sound that snatches all the breath from your body and leaves you cold. Not here. 
You look around, picking out the faces of your former friends. What? What the? This, this can't be. No, no, no way. Oh my god. Oh, fuck. The music sputters and dies as the light shuts off completely, leaving only the voice, a voice that is at once completely alien and horribly familiar. Everyone, please, together. <laughs> So yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, share this video with y'all's guys' friends if y'all enjoyed. Peace out, guys. Take care. Have a great day.